Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another Propaganda Cast Total War campaign episode. The Emirate of Cordoba continues its conquest of Hispania. Hispaniola, whatever. And we, of course, right here going to war with the Kingdom of Asturias, the remainders of the Visigothic Kingdom, which secured, uh, conquered Spain back in the day. Though, granted, there was a slight Byzantine sort of push into the south during the sort of uh, Justinian period. Which was then sort of kicked out during some later reigns of a some not so good empress and a particular empress in particular, I believe, which rather sort of caused the entire thing here to be lost to the well Umayyad Caliphate, which was charging up around then. Little fun fact there. But we got a bit of trade here, I think, with the Taif of Barcelona, possibly. Friend, let us use our time together in wisdom and seek a call. And it was great. Oh. Grab as much gold as possible. That's not really much of a counter offer. Yes, we will pay you nothing. Yes, sorry, Ahmed. That's not how we're going to do it, or Suleiman. So there we go, we also got this uh, fellow here, the Galatian separatists, sort of uh, hanging about. He seems to be sort of liking us. But, um, you know, we if we get these join uh, against Speak, them. Friend, and hopefully later we will drink to seal our agreement. Throw some money at them, just to. Uh, eh. Not happening. And they're just raiding. My lord. I'm tempted to just, you know, at your command. destroy them, kick them out. I mean, that's all they're going to do, you know. Might as well put them to pasture. Because they're not exactly helping the Empire. Well, the Emirate. So, let's build up here. Farms for some extra money. Alrighty. Let us end the turn and see what happens. Kingdom of Asturias, slightly sailing about there with a the boat. Mm, yes, Marca Inferior. There we go. Ready for battle. And grateful dogs. Your next command, my lord. And soon to be dead dogs. Stabbed with a mace. Oh. Such brutality. At your command. My lord. Uh, let's build a mosque. Do it with religion a bit. Just make that further forwards. We fight for you, my lord. Nah. Let's get rid of them. At your command. Is that They're all? Just in the way. Ooh. Step right in the knee and the neck. I'm really impressed by that arm power. There we go. Ready for orders. Lots of stuff. Quite well dead. Alright, no, we can't do any more then. We need a uh, Vismari stand up somewhere nearby or in the region, but that's not quite doable as of yet. In particular, not here where we don't. Well, the only food source is basically the food market, At your command. which does limit a bit what can be done. Oh, yes, and I gotta keep around there for a bit. The problem is, of course, with uh, not quite being sort of dominant in terms of religion, I do have to sort of take a bit of while to sort of settle down things here and there. Can I hire another? I'm not like that same one there. He's already working his magic, if you will. Not frightfully efficiently, but working it nonetheless. Great press would be good. More money, but of course also more goods to trade 
in which department wine is one of the more sort of uh, oh well you know they bring in the most money essentially it's the most valuable resource the salt and marble are also pretty valuable but wine you know tops them all so the more wine you can get you know the better generally until we can sort of get enough sold Quite there. There we go, we got religious tolerance researched. That should help a bit the situation. We'll go for the Royal Alcazar, since that I believe is part of the uh, goals. Yes, Palace Life. Something about income. Build one of those, we got that. Military unit, secure Toledo. All good, all good. How can I serve you? And who knows, I might just be able to hold fingers there. Might. Maybe it's temp the next level, next turn, I should be able to do it, though it's going to be very close. I can't really pull them away up from here either. Close, but we're not quite there either. could upgrade the bags, but that would leave little food, plus I don't really particularly need some uh, bigger stuff right now, it's more about focusing on the economy while slowly pushing back against, well, Asturias. Asturias. I can't quite, oh, actually I can, in which case, At your command. advance before the Kingdom of Asturias can build up further forces. That would be the beneficial thing, setting up an estate here, since I plan to sort of use this for agriculture, in which case the estates gain bonuses from any sort of agricultural income. Granted, none of these really provide that, for example, it's commerce, but for example, regular farms do provide. Overall, this is an overall pretty neat province with marble, olives, and wine. So there's a lot of money in that, basically. Plus, of course, Toledo, though, is even better with copper, gold and iron. I'm the only one you can trade, but overall copper and gold mines do provide a lot of sort of industrial resources and even so does iron. So overall, I mean, eventually I'm going to have to go to war with uh, Valencia because I want Guadalajara as well. I need it. Of course, not quite right away. Once we dealt with Asturias and perhaps some other things, we can sort of look into dealing with the other Typhus. Oh dear. That was a bit unexpected. They've already brought out a big army. I suspect there will be a few mercenaries builders during it. Ah oh, yes, the opposite caliphate. I don't intend to pay them taxes. It is an honor there we go. And there you go. Cartagena just barely stabilized in the nick of time. They're setting up for something there, I guess. The right hands, that's their Ready king too. Some of those a bit expensive, but just in case. There we go. They got some more. They got armored swordsmen, swordsmen, lots of cavalry, some of it raided cavalry, skirmishes. Well, plus, of course, Gaz, and we'll just cease the thing and see what happens for the time being. Just to see. As for Toledo. I rather want to turn that into an Alcazaba. So I can get up some whispering galleries and the likes to sort of, you know, help deal with corruption as I expand the empire because overall I want as little possible corruption in Toledo as possible, fully upgrading with the right things. That province is very beneficial. Very. There we go. 
bit of extra really can to be spread there around and we can also upgrade here for extra salt no not that kind of salt you twerps so there we go of course also this little island here Palma olive oils part of the Byzantines sort of theme of Sicily Though obviously the mod here sort of caught him something else, but there we go, under attack. I was sort of expecting that. A bit risky, but I'm basically counting on the cavalry and some other bits here to do the work. So alright, he's attacking me from the sea, but using means they're going to be separate until the rest of the force can arrive. Hmm. That could actually work out for me, since this cavalry is not meant to fight cavalry very well, whereas again mine is, as we established in the previous episode. Hmm. So while he is setting in his army there to land, I could actually deal with the king, and the rest of the, so all his cavalry. So once the infantry lands, they'll be with their support, and the garrison army will not land there, so yes. There we go. This world back into the steam we will cut them down before they get a foothold and throw their carcasses back for the enemy reinforcements are bearing down on us. At the double. Double time. Spray. The enemy approaches. Cavalry. Advance at speed. Charge. Engage. Go. There you go, that's the entire army they saw got out, uh, out to sea. It seems like one of my units got absolutely murdered. I'm guessing it would be their skirmisher cavalry. The unfortunate there, but that's what happens. This is war after all. There you go, their cavalry is getting slaughtered by spears, but also by lots of small rocks being thrown at them. As you might be noticing, my cavalry is doing quite alright there as the cavalry are, as long as they're not getting absolutely cut to ribbons. There we go, that is two units there, completely decimated. This is quickly turning out to be a bit of a bad plan here for the uh, Asturians. So we are suffering some losses overall, that should quickly turn to our favour ultimately, but even get their king, obviously. So we go. Read a camera being absolutely decimated there by the slingers. They're trying to get our general obviously as well, but it's not quite working out that way. Yep, there you go, enemy general is deader than... I don't know, something that's really dead. Communism. Close quarters execution there with the slingers. And dead. That was basically their cavalry, which was one of the major worrying components. There's still, of course, the rest of their force, but without the cavalry, without the king, they are what is known as a lot bloody easier to deal with. Particularly, of course, now their morale is poor. You move up there, begin hammering away, their javelin skirmishes there. Well, it's only potent if they can get close enough, but not the heavily armoured and should be. Nice target here for my. And hopefully, yes, the spearmen can sort of block their stuff. There we go, they're spreading out, which only makes them easier to deal with.
in particular because they're sort of being flanked here. Shields are rather directional, so if, even if a unit has strong shields, you can get behind them, for example. The shields count for nothing in on the side, and that way they can quickly be cut apart. That's a little combat detail there. Of course, most units hate being flanked, but uh, generally, I mean, you can sort of quickly circumvent a lot of sort of you know the, some of the more powerful units' sort of shield blocking ability. Granted, most units that sort of have good shields tend to be late game unless they're the Byzantines, who tend to have this on much quicker. There you go. That's the garrison getting absolutely annihilated here in the process. And I imagine the rest of the <laughs> army's just basically trying to figure out where to land. Not, not this, 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 this doesn't work. I need the right sand to land in. But everybody is dying. Shouldn't we be doing something? No. I want to make a spectacular landing. You're an idiot. Yes. Are they going to be landing? These fools. Or are you just going to speed up until they figure out where they want to go? When we got. Christ, I don't hope this is going to take all day. I mean, I'm glad they fixed one of the issues of Attila, which was basically the ships would just block off, so sometime there'd just be someone sailing out there on the bloody sea for ages. Now they sort of land and then someone you know, actually takes the rest of the ship and takes it up because good lord it's kind of a dumb idea to hang around there anyways. Oh, oh here we are, yes, 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 no, 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 don't, don't turn over, come on, land, land, please. We don't have all day, I have viewers who have lives. There we go, there we go. They're landing. Not exactly having a fun day about it. So there we go, spearmen, skirmishers, swordsmen, the armoured swordsmen, there you are probably going to be the best bet since they're actually disciplined. Disciplined, by the way, means they suffer less of a penalty from losing the general, for example, they're overall just harder to break and cook for some sort of turn around several times over. So disciplined units generally tend to be good. Fun fact about the Emirate of Cordoba, they have very, very few disciplined units and uh, besides the general, they're pretty much sort of all late tier. They basically extend to a bit of cavalry and some unique spearmen they can hire. The rest is not disciplined. Whereas more of the sort of, you know, Christian armies do tend to have more disciplined units. The Westphalians and the Danes, and I believe also the Avar, do lack a bit as well, though they do have other things to make up for that. Setting up to flank. Skirmish is just being run into it. Go, that's the first wave, which is already getting absolutely decimated. Crumbling awfully fast. Right, time to see if you can't flank them. These are the armoured swordsmen, they are probably our biggest threat. To put it mildly, but overall, things are quickly turning to our favour. Sadly, the Spanish King's plan, or the Assyrian King's plan, turned out to be rather rubbish. Got some skirmishes, spearmen, 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 swordsmen, spearmen and skirmishes. That's it, basically. The armored swordsmen are holding up rather well, though, despite being surrounded. largely surrounded anyways by people who don't exactly have their best interests in heart. Quite the opposite. They're rather keen on killing them. As they should be, of course. 
still 121 kills I mean they're really getting the job done here there's all these further spearmen and I think some levies as well aren't quite as good in uh, melee combat as the actual spearmen and of course they don't really compare to the uh, armored swordsmen who do have a bit of better attack they could name the defense armor and so on Slight though, the uh, army is not doing too well, they might have to move up there to boast them. The armored swordsmen are making quite an impression. Which I imagine is what the king was paying them to do. It's too bad he's not around to see it now. Probably should try and avoid not to aim into the backs of our own. Just a mild suggestion there, the rule 51-80-54. A unit's ammunition is spent and it can no longer fire. There you go, Levy Spearman, sides and flanks exposed, getting pelted with rocks and suffering for it. Oh! The armored swordsman finally broke under the pressure. Thank the heavens. Kill 174. Well, certainly earned their price tag. I'll give them that. But ultimately, even they cannot stem the tide of defeat at this point of the fight. Fleet of Hearts Man versus 200. Till 2200, and the large army was largely losing again due to the whole setting off the cavalry first. I mean, that's the thing, cavalry armies can't really set off from the ships, they sort of land elsewhere and then join in the battle. It's a bit of an interesting thing, which you got a plan for, obviously. In this case, the king hadn't. Obviously, if I hadn't had all the slingers, all this Berber like cavalry and such, of course, I might have suffered a bit more. But thanks to the Berber cavalry, of course, of some which rather broke off. But also the slingers and all the spearmen, I was ultimately able to sort of overpower that. Not entirely sure what you're doing, but you're definitely doing it wrong. The men have thrown down their weapons and are oh dear, someone broke. I am disappointed in you, men. Deeply. <laughs> Please! Come back! Please! Even as their comrades are dying! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Some didn't make it off the ship in time, jumped off. Though that. That does remind me of a boarding action that went horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. I think half the Marines or something just jumped off the ship to their deaths. It was absolutely horrifically funny. As he just sort of. Jumped off in a stream there, of course, intending to hit one off the other one, and then there's been a gap, and they just kept jumping in like lemmings. It was horrible. There we go. At your command. Things are not looking too good there. For Asterius. Markamedia, is that the one there? Oh, that's Valencia. Oh, Markamedia. Oh, that one. Oh, I hadn't noticed that. Oh, that's a bit awkward. I guess I'll have to shift over the uh, Emir there to deal with that. Right, looks we can uh, perhaps leave here. Yes. My lord. Slowly turn towards something more command, my lord. positive, which is good. I can assist you further. And help towards here. Attack. All the way with this, Santiago should indeed, yes, be open. Capturing. Uh. In that sleep, Santiago fell to the imminent 
of Cordova. Ready for battle. Knock that one down. Repair that, repair that, repair that. At your command. And we can get us some better morale. Better morale is always good. Better this, better this. Quintain is only useful for governors. For commanders, you'd rather want to say something like this. And the lifts Oviedo, Lugo, and then one town all the way over there. On the other hand, the Typha of Valencia is aggressively expanding. What kind of fellow is he? Yeah, he's aggressive, he's loyal, he uh, admires strong empires, so he can be trusted for now, I suppose. But he's clearly going to be troubled sooner or later, one way or the other. I fear. that one and can we convert that nope we cannot yet anyways Wait, that is nicely secured a mosque shall be erected to celebrate the victory where the Asturian king fell my lord and his chamberlains See much advantage in the treaty. Sure, why not? We can always break it later on. It looks like the Abbasid Caliphate does decided just not to bother. Jolly good for us. I could try and push towards Lugo. They haven't built up a new army, in which case we sort of further pressure the Asturians. Gain more of the territory and of course gain more resources while denying them resources is just an important plus. Further destabilizing it by causing further war weariness for them. That's a thing to keep in mind. War weariness is not just something that applies to you, it also applies to the enemy. Yeah. Ready for a rebel army here, which could quickly grow into a new power of its own. I believe it's some kind of Typha. And they've actually got some horsemen, which actually slightly improved Berber light cavalry. That's a bit. They got Hinetas too. Hinetas. Hinetas. What to build here? Probably be a good idea to help. Further stabilize things there. It is an honor to serve you. At your command. Could hire some. It's a great and glorious. Yeah. Also, we got a woodcutter. He's a lumberjack and he's okay. So there we go. Slow progress. But progress, nonetheless. They're not really slow progress. I mean, I managed to. Oh, I forgot about this part actually. Can't forget about this. There's some larger bonus there loyalty, public order, tax rates, trade income, integrity and forces. That's not exactly small biscuits. Bit awkward, I forgot about that, but I already managed to push up here. Take two cities, kill their king, destroy the biggest army. Now they just enter Santander and Oviedo. But it's only going to come to blows with the Valencia sooner or later. An offer of peace from us should not be spurned. Now, what say you? Mm, no thanks. I just want them out of the world as soon as possible. I have no interest in keeping them alive. GG 
strategically or anything like that. We go. Some Andalusian infantry, Andalusian skirmishers, horsemen, hinetas, raiders, and a bit of this and that. But overall, nothing compared to the glorious army. There we go. Through the head. At once. Ready for order. Second Caceres. Guess I could upgrade it now. Toledo. Not so much happening there. Just turning over to that one since that actually does give more growth, which is beneficial. At your command. Could try and strike it over here, but I think I, if I do that, I might be pushing a bit too far ahead. If I'm quite ready for that, so I suggest hang slightly back, building up also my force here a bit further. Calvi has taken some blows. Suppose for some extra spearmen. It's a great and glorious thing. Then I might be able to take Yedo, and of course be ready to sort of strike down any rebels. I might decide they could do better than me. Which is obviously heretical. Hmm, there you go, less corruption, always good to have. Ill managed corruption can bring you down if you're not careful. If things then sort of turn sour with the numerous other kingdoms who suddenly turn against you. Managing corruption kind of quite good. Oh, they've gone to war with the Duchy of Pamplona. Guess someone's running stay. with the bulls. Waiting for more orders. settlement. Got a nice chunky army there, but uh, I don't think he can match my army. None will escape. Ready for put. Creating here to a minaret at mosque. I don't think this we can do something here. So that's that. We will build a field here. That's gaining a more money. And food. My lord. Go more taxes, more taxes and cheaper stuff to build. And what here? That's probably not strategist. Uh, guess a quintain. Which does remind me, I do believe I can give him then the uh, Kurusani warrior as well. I mean, you know, five attack is nice, but breaking the enemy faster is also nice. Let's just uh, put it like that, shall we? The navy's pulling back there. That's there. Looking ready to give me a headache. Great glory. To the I can land. attack here. Which was likely to draw them in, but still I could do it. Take that, deal with that army. Besieging that would probably be well, n almost the final straw there for Asterius, which we then won't leave them with Santander. Which of course I can secure would give me plenty of resources as well. That behind there, plus of course of Yedo with its lumber and salt would be quite helpful there. Looks like they're raising an army in Guadalajara. <laughs> can further upgrade for more salt. From Almeria, I could also upgrade for more wine. Oh, I can upgrade here for something more there. 
Ah, yes, that not crash, man. What was this thinking? Uh, that's it. Ah, yes, a bit smart, you stand. That would uh, help with the the squalor issues there. Plus, even give her replenishment bonuses, though I don't need that. But the Bismarstan would help here, would also cover nearby provinces, though sadly not Toledo. Still, it would help here, would help with the marble and such, so. Bismarstan would be good. Indeed, and with that, I think we shall stop here. Sort of save the fall of Asturias for the next episode. After that, we'll probably strike at Pamplona. And with that done, we'll probably sort of. Uh, I could, I suppose, put slightly up in France, but I think I'll sort of just try and deal with the remaining typhus here. That's basically Valencia, Zaragoza, Barcelona. Sort of consolidate it all into one mighty kingdom, and then push up towards France and go towards Paris. That basically sounds like a plan. They'll probably need to build up at least an additional army for to that. For you, my lord. And also improve this one with some more lovely troops. I'll probably actually sort of put those away. Since we are going to be getting uh, a barrack soon enough, which allows me to hire my own cavalry in that sense. They're my going lord. to be cheaper to maintain, maintain seeing with the mercenary and illusion infantry. That way you can also build up a bit more resources for them. Which I could use for other things, actually. We oh, yeah, need to uh, turn this one into a estate as well. Yes, this is beginning to look very good, very good. So there you go. Thank you all for joining in. Hope you had some fun. Hope you learned some things. Hopefully you just enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to subscribe, like, and share it with as many people as possible. The more that see it, the better. So thank you all, and see you all in two days' time when the next video will be up. Bye.